What's up, Laker fans? Josh Hart has become a key part of the Lakers' rotation. Let's take a closer look at his game. But first, SeatGeek is an app that aggregates tickets from all over the web, making buying simple. They put a 1 to 100 score on every ticket so you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one, and they let you see the view from your seat before you buy. Click on the Me tab and enter the promo code LFR to save $20 off of your first order. You can download the app by clicking the link below the video. By supporting SeatGeek, you're supporting my content too, so please use them when you got tickets to buy. If you want more thoughtful media out there, this is the best way to send that message. Josh Hart leads the Lakers in three-point shooting at the time of this recording, and he's very well coached as a shooter. He almost always has his target up prior to the catch, which allows him to catch it cleanly and get the shot up quicker. He combines those target hands with squaring his shoulders to the passer. Once he receives the pass, he'll square up to the basket and go up on balance. This is very fundamentally sound. A lot of guys will reach across their body rather than square up to the passer, and that messes with their mechanics. really holds his follow through and while I can't demonstrate this on video, I can tell you from watching him up close that he has the most rotation on his jumper on the team. Those things help explain why he's shooting a high percentage and these things explain why he's getting a high volume of those shots. He has a really good understanding of relocation principles. When you're on the weak side, you want to move up a position if the ball handler dribbles away from you. This is commonly referred to as lifting. If the point guard is going to deliver that pass, he's usually going to do it around the free throw line. But Ennis sees a lane to the basket and Hart reacts to that by dropping back down to the level of the ball. This feel for how to slide into the open space and give the passer an open window to get it to him allows him to get a high volume of threes up. On this one, he can't slide down because the corner spot is already filled, so he kicks back behind Lonzo and fills his spot. One of the most open shots that a player can get is by filling the spot that the dribble penetrator just came from. When defenders chase him off at the three-point line, he's done well to finish at the basket if he can get there. He often keeps two hands on the ball to maintain control and shoots overhand around the basket, which I like. But there are times when the defense is going to chase you off of the three-point line and you don't have a lane to get all the way to the basket. The dribble pull-up is what's available in these situations, and that's an area where he struggles. But to his credit, he doesn't take very many of those, electing to drive and kick most of the time instead. His biggest question mark to me as a shooter is if he can come off of screens. According to Synergy, he's only done this four times this season, so we don't really know if he can or he can't. If he's able to, that greatly increases his value as a shooter. The other area where Hart does a good deal of his work is in transition. He does a good job of absorbing contact, and he's particularly good when he's the ball handler on the break.
when filling the wing, he has a good feel for how to get ahead of the pack, so he gets a decent number of opportunities on these. With over 70% of his possessions being used on spot ups and in transition, there isn't room for much else. That's probably for the best because he hasn't been particularly good at any of the other things, although the sample is so small that it's hard to say anything definitive at this point. I think the most important of these areas will be his development as a cutter. Since he's primarily a spot up guy, these opportunities will be available. Hart's best attribute on the defensive end is his ability to switch onto bigs, and it starts with his post base. Check out his feet here, they're both pointing outward to help him get low and get leverage. Bigger players will try to bump smaller players in the post to create separation, and this helps to mitigate against that. Hart bumps back with his chest and lower body. But because he leans on guys and bumps them with his chest, he can be susceptible to them using his weight against him and spitting off of him. He also knows that when there's a size mismatch, he has to do a lot of his work before the catch, and he really battles at this. All told, he's about a league average post defender, which is amazing considering who he's usually defending down there. The other component of this that's important is his ability to defensive rebound. I recently asked Luke about this, and this is what he said. With that lineup with uh, Lonzo and Hart on the court, uh, they're both unusually good on the defensive glass for guards. How does that change kind of what you can do with the lineup when you have guards that can rebound like that? Well, that's the big guards that can rebound like that are why we had so many fast break points last game. That's that's a huge part of uh, being able to get out and, and get uh, get the pace that we want. To answer your original question, we can, you know, we're able to switch more. Uh, we're able to do some more things that we're get good at because those guys can rebound so well uh, that we don't get beat up a lot on the glass when we get to those units. Hart is capable of being a very good perimeter defender one day, but he has some bad habits to break. He leaves his feet way too often and can get burned because of that. And he's really prone to fouling shooters. He might not like it, but if you reach your hand in and the shooter goes into his shooting motion, that's a foul. He also has a tendency to skip rather than slide his feet, making him vulnerable to crossovers. This isn't something that he's incapable of. When he slides his feet, he does a good job of staying in front of guys. He just needs to get in the habit of doing that more often.
Lastly, Hart has really poor numbers as a pick and roll defender, but the tape doesn't really match up with that. His worst habit that he does consistently is not icing side pick and rolls. But on a lot of the tape that I watched, he played pretty good pick and roll defense and the offensive player still scored on a contested shot. All in all, Josh Hart is a dependable and professional young player who knows what he's good at and sticks to it. He has a few bad habits to clean up, but he's going to have a very long career in the NBA. Alright, that'll do it for this one. As you may have heard, I'm doing this full time now. My goal is to create consistent and thoughtful content that helps you enjoy the Lakers on a deeper level. I'm very much dependent upon Laker fans to continue this work, so if you believe in what I do, please click on either the Venmo or Patreon link below and donate. Thanks so much guys, I'll catch you next time.